My name is Hanish Prasad. I'm the uh, Product Marketing Manager for vSphere with Operations Management. And joining me today is uh, Martin Yep. He's the Product Marketing Manager for vSphere. And Jeff Godfrey. He's the Technical Marketing for the MBU. So today we're going to talk about the value of going beyond standalone vSphere by adding performance monitoring, capacity management capabilities into your virtualized environment. We also have the opportunity to go through a series of demonstrations to show the key features and capabilities that vSphere operation management has to offer to show you how easy it is to assess your health, monitor your risk, as well as um, gain additional efficiencies within your virtualized environments. Now, we would appreciate if we hold off questions towards the end of the presentation. I assure you we have plenty of time to, for everyone to engage. So with that, I'd like to hand this off to my colleague, Martin, to get us started. Thanks, Anish. <clears throat> Oops. It's not working. Yeah, it's good. You're good. Well, no, no, no. It's not working properly. Okay. No, no, it's okay. You got it? Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, before I start, I just want to take a poll of the audience. How many of you have an IT environment that looks very similar to this chart here where business expectations is outpacing the ability of your IT department to, um, to execute? Okay, a couple hands in the audience. And also, how many of you have flat or declining IT budgets this year? Okay, a lot more hands. Well, I want to welcome you all to the new reality of the mobile cloud era. With more users, more endpoints, and more data than ever before, there's a widening gap between the business expectations and the ability of IT to execute. So the dynamic nature of this uh, mobile cloud era means that the traditional ways in which we manage IT just isn't feasible anymore. Um, to, to narrow this gap between uh, business expectations and the ability of IT to, do, to deliver, we basically need innovation. We basically need a way to free up the resources and shift from projects that are maintenance to projects that are more innovative. We basically need game-changing technology that will bridge this gap and basically allow you to deliver at the speed of IT, uh, to deliver IT at the speed of business. The software defined data center can be that technology. The software defined data center is basically a data center where all infrastructure is virtualized and delivered as service and control of the data center is fully automated with software. Um, basically what this means is that VMware, the software defined data center is um, taking what VMware has done with compute virtualization, extending it to the storage and network layer, and then wrapping management and operations capability around it to basically enable you to not only increase your agility and efficiency, but also your security. At the same time, it enables you to maintain control and give you choice over what applications to deploy. The journey to the software defined data center, though, is not a um, journey that you take overnight. It's not like a light switch where you can just turn on and off. There's actually three phases to the software defined data center. The first phase, many of you are already familiar with, this is all about standardization on x86 platform and consolidation. A lot of you have already seen the CapEx benefits um, with consolidation through, through vSphere. The second phase is more around uh, increasing your quality of service and reliability through automation. Operations management plays a huge role here in the sense that it gives you the ability to look at your health and monitor your, um, your, your environment, assess risks, and plan for the future. And then the, the final stage of the software defined data center is about reaping those OpEx benefits and increasing the agility through a true IT delivery, um, IT as a service model. But regardless of what phase of the software defined data center you're in, um, the core commonality is that the foundation of the software defined data center is um, vSphere with operations management. So what is vSphere with operation management? Simply put, it's a bundle that has uh, vSphere with operation management standard. That is, it's your flavor of vSphere that you're familiar with, standard enterprise or enterprise plus, coupled with vCenter operations uh, standard, uh, giving you, this clicker's <laughs> funky today, uh, giving you a bundle that gives you the world's leading virtualization platform with the tools that help you monitor your health, gain insight, recover capacity, and plan for the future. Thank you, Martin. 
So as Martin mentioned, right, like we're, especially as we move into the mobile cloud era, the demands on IT are ever increasing. And with flat to limited budget increases, it becomes extremely challenging for IT to continue to meet the demands. And so what we need is LO tools to that are going to bridge this gap. And what businesses, in, in essence, need is a business and application platform that they can trust, something that is easy to manage, but also gives them the confidence that their data center is running the most efficiently and optimally for their business. Now, many people have our, many of our customers have already started down that journey um, by deploying standalone vSphere in their virtualized environments. And I've seen tremendous amount of benefits and cost savings just by taking that first step. However, if you think about the business demands that are coming down the pipeline, the number of virtual machines in your environment are going to naturally grow because of it, right? There's going to be more and more VMs being spun up. You're going to go from 5, 10 virtual machines, maybe 50 VMs, 100 VMs, even to thousands of virtual machines. Now, as you grow your virtualized environment, what we find is, is that you get a new set of challenges that you tend to have to face, right? Things like VM sprawl, cons uh, issues around over-provisioning virtual machines, spotty visibility into your virtualized environment, and even troubleshooting becomes even more complex. Now, I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper into maybe two of these um, challenges that we're currently facing. And let's start with over-provisioning. So with the Forrester recently did a study where of small and medium-sized businesses and found that roughly 44% of them were running, had a consolidation ratio of less than about roughly six, six VMs per CPU. Now, we know that that opportunity to get that consolidation ratio higher is, is to, up to much there and up to 25 VMs per CPU. But the reason that businesses have, we believe that there's a challenge to get to that level of consolidation is because the, the, as your virtualized environments grow, there's very limited visibility in the tools that give you the confidence that, hey, if I reprovision my VMs, I'm going to be able to maintain that level of service and performance that the businesses require. Complex troubleshooting is another one. If you have two to three, four virtual machines, it's easy kind of to look into vCenter server, open up the console if there's a performance issue, pull some data out of the vCenter server, maybe analyze it to kind of get to the root cause and get to the root of the problem and resolve it. But as you get to large number of virtual machines, that, becomes, that's, that process becomes tougher to scale and takes longer and longer to actually get to the problem resolution. And Research, we've, a lot of the research we've done has shown that for small and medium-sized businesses, it could potentially take half a day to a week to fully resolve a performance issue that the business is experiencing. Now imagine that with the demands on, on IT from businesses these days, that is an extremely long period of time. And it depends on how, and even if you have a web-based or internet-based company, that's an infinite amount of time. So what we find is, is that all these new challenges that are currently facing simply because the virtual environment is growing, that the need for performance monitoring and, and capacity management capabilities become even that more important. And vSphere or operations management is the product that we have that will help you address and tackle each of these challenges head on. Now I want to take a look at think about vSphere of ops management with a slightly different perspective, maybe through an analogy, if you will. So when the cell phone first came out, it was game-changing technology, right? We all, if first time, people were no longer tied to their landlines. They can take phone calls anywhere. It ushered in a tremendous era of efficiency, not only for the individuals, but also for the businesses and global economy alike. But then came the smartphone. And to be honest, when the smartphone first came out, I was a little bit hesitant. So I had a nice, fancy dashboard, a lot of bells and whistles. But all I needed to do was really make a phone call. But when I started playing with it, and I'm sure as many of you have, is that it's a no-brainer. Like, I mean, the, the amount of additional efficiencies I can get out of my personal life in terms of email, surfing the web, um, faster texting, and so forth, are quite evident. And, I would, and it's a direction that I would never go back. Right? Once you adopt the smartphone, you're there. In a similar light, when I'm thinking of this flip phone, I'm thinking of vSphere. It was a game-changing technology excellent piece of software that really ushered in an era of tremendous amount of cost savings for not only the businesses, but the economy globally 
and that's something that we're all very much aware of. But well, just like the smartphone, we're thinking vSphere with operations management. It has a very clean, intuitive dashboard that gives you that end-to-end -end visibility into your virtualized environment and allows you, gives you the tools and capabilities that will give you the confidence in running your data center the most optimally as possible. <clears throat> so let's kind of take a little bit deeper look into the dashboard itself. Right? This is kind of like the, your view into your data center, and, but don't, don't be mistaken by how easy, clean, and intuitive it is. There's a lot of built-in analytics and predictive analytics underneath the hood that pro provide the power that you need. If you think about, the, the dashboard is kind of broken up into three components. We have health, risk, and efficiency. The best way to kind of think about the health badge it's like, what are the most immediate problems that my data center is ru running into right now? If this is red, these are something things that you want to take a look at right now and address immediately. Now, once you get all those green, you also have the opportunity to take a look at what's some of the things that what's coming down the pipeline. What's indicators of the future? Risk and efficiency. One of the best ways to kind of think of risk is like, what visa, let me step back for a second. So vSphere with operations management takes all the service data that's being collected by your vCenter server, analyzes it, and, produces, and provides you an insight into what's potential potholes coming down the pipeline. It really allows you to become more proactive with your data center rather than react. And finally, we have efficiency. And this is where you have the opportunity to take advantage of all the <coughs> analytic tools in, within VCR operations management to learn how much resources you can potentially reclaim. Right? So now let's take a little bit one step further and kind of go deeper into each of these badges to showcase a little bit of the functionalities and capabilities that are built into it. Under health, we have health badge, we have three sub badges: workload, anomalies, and faults. Workload, as you can imagine, it just kind of gives you an idea of how um, stressed or how much, I guess, how, uh, how much demand is being put on to that particular virtual machine. And then we have anomalies. Anomalies kind of give you an idea of when that virtual machine or object is going out of normal spec. Now, one of the things I want to call out here about this particular uh, metric is that, unlike a lot of competing products, which are based on static thresholds, these sort of operations management does use dynamic thresholds. The tools underneath and the analytics built into it take, analyzes the information and of the virtual machine to understand what, how that VM is set to behave over a certain period of time. And based on the normal behavior of that particular VM, it will dynamically set the threshold so you can actually get smart alerts which only signify or signal when there's truly something going wrong with their VM. Now, this is a really powerful thing because we've seen uh, false alerts in your email box and customers' emails box go down dramatically because of it. We also have faults. As you can imagine, this is something like immediately hardware faults that you can, uh, the system is running into. Switching over to risk. The first uh, submetric here is time remaining. Now, this is a really, really cool metric to have. Because what it does is when it analyzes your virtualized environment, it tells you not only which resource you're going to run out, but it tells you when you're going to run out of that resource. Now imagine you're looking at this dashboard, and it says in 30 days or 60 days, you're going to run out of storage based on how fast and how much your data center is currently being used and how much more demand is being put on it. That gives you the opportunity to contact your vendor to place that order for extra storage, have it delivered, installed, configured, and ready to go even before your data center becomes resource constrained. The next is capacity remaining. This is a tool, uh, indicator of how much, how many more VMs you could potentially spin up in your virtualized environment, how many are currently running, and how much more you have to go. And finally, stress. This is similar to uh, the workload badge in the, um, in the prior slide, but it's more of an extended period of time. I like think of it more of as a heat map. 
And finally, I want to go into efficiency badge. Under efficiency, we have two uh, submetrics here as well. First is reclaimable waste. Now, this is where the tool takes a look into your virtualized environment, all your VMs, takes a look at how much resources it's using, even the peak and valley in terms of usage, to determine how much resource it could potentially reclaim, safely reclaim without impacting the performance or service level agreements. We also have density, which gives you insight into how what your consolidation ratios are and what it could potentially be based on the workload and the underlying hardware environments. So now that we've kind of gone over at a high level some of the, 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 the dashboard, how to kind of think about what each of these badges and each of these KPIs indicate and the type of visibility you can get into your virtualized environment, we're going to switch gears a little bit now to kind of demonstrate to you some of the, how all of this can be applied to real world problems. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jeff. All right. So, marketing, <laughs> real stuff. Hey, I mean, they look good, they look good. I wear the t-shirt because I get down and dirty with the product. So, we can go a couple different ways here. We can talk a little bit about what we're seeing on the screen right now, which is really the 5.7 the flavor, or 5.8, I should say, 5X, of the Center Operations Manager, a.k.a. Be realize operations, right? Did you hear the announcement today, yesterday, today? They're talking about the rebranding. Anyone hear that? So there's a couple reasons why that's important. Um, this is a, a VSOM uh, lecture, if you will, or a discussion. I'd rather it be a discussion. So we're talking about the standard edition of the Center Operations Manager, but there's also additional flavors. There's advanced and enterprise. Okay, but here we're going to be talking about the standard edition. So, uh, is anyone running VC Ops right now in your environments? Okay, so a good solid 50 plus percent. That's awesome. And it sounds like mostly standard edition. Is anyone above standard edition? Enterprise? Advanced? Okay, so just let me delineate what the difference really is. So, in standard edition, where I'm going, to, I'm going to go off script here a little bit. Standard edition is basically your vSphere environment. So, when you just have a vSphere environment and you want to get your performance analytics, capacity planning, all that good stuff, when you just care about vSphere, that's your standard edition. When you want to advance now into monitoring some of your infrastructure, your storage arrays. Uh, your fiber channel switches, et cetera. That is when you step up to the advanced edition, and now you get the bolt-on management pack products from EMC or from Brocade or from NetApp that give visibility uh, deeper into their physical hardware. Right? So that's the advanced edition that takes you there. The enterprise edition, the next step up, the last step up, is where you get visibility into your operating system and your applications. So there are some management packs for... Oracle, for SAP, for SQL, for Exchange, right? So you can get that visibility in your dashboard visibility into the application layer at the enterprise level. Make sense? So that's the delineation. Standard, vSphere only. Advanced, talk to your infrastructure. And enterprise, get into your apps. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about how we actually solve problems. Yeah, this thing does fast forward through some things. It's all, it's all right. I'll take care of it. So basically, uh, we, we heard the rundown here. We've got three primary columns, right? On the left-hand side, I don't know if this is even working. So under the health area, that's, again, the immediate things that need to be fixed today or fixed right now or looked at. The middle area is risk based on trends. When am I going to run out of something? What am I going to run out of first? How much time do I have left? Okay. And then on the far right is the efficiency. And we've actually changed some, some wording uh, since this flavor. There's what's called a, a waste area. We don't call it waste anymore. That's kind of a, no one likes to show their manager report, hey, here's what we're wasting, <laughs> so, right? We changed that to reclaimable resources. A little bit more politically correct, right? So you'll start to see that in some of the newer editions, reclaimable resources, what used to be called waste. And what that shows you on that far right-hand side is exactly what it says. How efficient am I using what I have, right? A lot of times when things start to go south, when things aren't performing, your users are complaining, my application's really slow, what do you do? 
you bump up the resources. You know, oh, I guess you need four CPU in your, VP, in your VM. Or, oh, I guess you need eight gig of RAM instead of four gig of RAM. Well, once you start to do that, you start to become more and more, less and less efficient, I guess I should say. So what we like to say is problems tend to move from the far right and they go left. So if you're efficient and you're efficiently using the resources you have, you're not going to have in the middle column there a risk of contention where you're contending for resources, which are going to stop a lot of the health problems from happening before they happen. So yes, the far left side health are things that you probably want to address right now, the red and hot spots. But again, we, we also like to say, well, if you concentrate on the far right side, get efficient, you'll reduce your risk and you'll stop some of the problems from happening before they happen. Make sense? Okay. So this one I'm looking at here is the 5X, 5H, I guess is what this was built off of. Um, did anyone hear any or see any presentations of the new 6.0 platform? Okay, good. Now again, this is a talking about standard edition here, although I am going to keep going off script and talk to you a little bit about the advanced and enterprise edition. The biggest changes between the 5X version and the 6X version, the 5X version today when you spin it up and you sort of cap out and you run out of capacity, you have to then fire up another V app and start collecting data in that second instance and they don't talk to each other. There's no common interface between those two silos. So the only way to increase capacity is, is scale up and then spin up new instances. One of the biggest platform changes in 6.0 is a shared cluster. So when you need more capacity, you just spin up another node and now the workload starts to be distributed against all the nodes in the cluster. That's a major architectural change in the 6.0 platform. It's something definitely um, worth looking into if you're, you know, you're thinking about scaling your, uh, your operations platform out. Okay. Uh, one other thing, again, this is a standard crowd, nothing personal, but that's what we're talking about, right? Standard edition, I'm sure you're, you're all exceptional, you're well beyond standard. But the, in the 5X environment, you have two interfaces. So if you're running advanced or enterprise, if you want to get your custom dashboards or install those management packs, you have to flip over to the what? The custom UI. This is the vSphere UI, but then there was a completely separate UI when you wanted to get into managing your infrastructure components. That's merged now in the 6.0 platform. So there's just the single UI, and you, you'll see all of your dashboards, everything, all within a unified interface. That's kind of a big deal, because again, if, if you're running advanced or enterprise today and you want to see your capacity stuff, you have to use the vSphere interface. If you want to see your custom dashboards, you have to flip over to the other interface, and it's not easy to correlate the two. So that's another problem that's been solved in the 6.0. But I'm way off script, so let me go back to what we're looking at right here. We're talking about solving problems in this instance with the 5.8 version. So there's been a scenario here. If we look back on the, uh, the first screen, we're looking pretty healthy. 93 is a good score out of, out of 100. So basically, green's good. Yellow's trending bad, orange is, uh-oh, red is like, uh, you're going to get a pager call, most likely. So green is pretty good from a health standpoint. We've got a little bit of at risk here, and efficiency-wise, we're looking pretty good. But we've got uh, some complaints from uh, an, owner, an owner of a specific VM, Windows 1, I think it's called. It's hard to read that small screen. Uh, so I'm searching for it. So I'm going to drill in and try to find that VM and see if I can figure out what's going on. Okay, so I search for the VM. And I've now changed my context here to, to be at the exact VM. And so now my badges are going to change to reflect the VM. I've contextually switched over to look at the VM. So health, uh, not so great. I can see this is a, a six-hour slice right here. In about the last hour and a half or so, my health dipped down significantly. right? And I can see down here I've got some alerts that have started to kick in. So I need to sort of drill in a little bit and see what's, see what's happening here. My risk is pretty high, too. Again, I mean, if something is unhealthy, I'm at risk of, uh, of, of running out of some sort of a resource. So I can start to drill into that even a little bit more and say, all right, well, let's go into that health badge and find out what's really contributing to that score decreasing. Okay? Is this familiar to everyone? You've all done this in your VC ops environment? 
Okay, a few of you have. Good. So this is good inf new information, hopefully good information for the rest of you. Okay, so now I've uh, basically, as, uh, as we've clicked onto our health badge here, the health is made up of these three things, as we heard uh, earlier. It's made up of workload, anomalies, and faults. So my workload's at about 43. That's not too bad. My anomalies are getting a little bit high, 49, and then I don't have any faults, so I'm not concerned about that. So, but I see on the far right here that I'm, my most constrained resource is CPU. So really quickly, VC ops, and I'm, I have to call it VC ops here, but I'm going to probably flip between V realize ops as well because I have to drill it into my head that that's what the new product is called. But here with VC ops, basically it's going to quickly show you what's my most constrained resource, right? CPU. That's a really quick focus right in. I know where to look to see what's going on. So I see my recent drop in performance. Again, this is a six-hour slice right here. This is we call this the cereal box view, right? Looks like a cereal box. It's a six-hour window. In the last hour or so, things have really tapered off from a health standpoint. And again, I'm, being, uh, I'm seeing a corresponding rise in anomalies. So, so again, these three sub-badges here, I see their information on the right here, zero faults. But my anomalies are starting to go outside the noise line. This is important. You see that gray line right there? That's the normal noise line. So systems chatter. There's, an, there's always an amount of things that are sort of in flux, but below the line, everything's cool. I'm not anomalous. I'm just, I'm just a normal chatter, right? But when things start to go outside of that and go above the gray line, I have something that is outside of normal, right? And this is going to help you, again, drill into what's not normal, okay? And that's going to help you troubleshoot what's really going wrong here. Let me time check here. All right, so I'm going to click over into my workload. And now I start to see over here on the right-hand side, my workload is made up CPU, memory, uh, physical, and I think network would be down the bottom if I scroll down. But right off the bat, remember we said CPU, we were bound by CPU. Here it says again, CPU demand is the most constrained resource. And what this means, if I'm looking here, this, this gray line is saying how much memory uh, excuse me, how much CPU that virtual machine is demanding. So if he could get it, that's what I want. The gray line below is saying, eh, sorry, that's all you get because something else is constraining it. So the VM wants more than it's getting. That's a constrained resource. And now we need to figure out why. What happened? Why is that thing constrained? So we can start to drill in. We can look at the anomalies. If we click over to the anomalies section, we get a sort of a stacked ranked list of things that are anomalous. So things that are most out of order are going to be near the top. Things that are lesser out of order are going to be lower in the list. So I can start to drill into those and I start to see that, you know, my ready CPU ready time is up. I've got some throttling that went up. My active CPU has gone down. What the heck? What's going on? Let's see if we can figure out what caused that. So now I can go and try and correlate events. So there may be an event that happened that could have triggered this degradation, right? So I'm going to go and click on my events tab. And that's going to take me to a timeline of sort of anomalies that are happening over time. And whoop, big spike just happened recently. And you see there's a correlation here between this event. Oops, come on. That basically says at this point in time, this event kicked in. And so I look at that event down below, and it's highlighted here in red, and it basically says, someone set a limit on the VM. Someone set a CPU limit. Before, it was un there, was no there were no limits, but someone went in and said, I want to limit this to 1,500 uh, megahertz, basically. And so that's what caused the delay. Now, what's the main problem here? I don't know who did it. I do know when it happened, but I don't know who did it. So again, going off script a little bit, when you talk about the vCenter or the vRealize suite, one of the other components of the suite when you go above the standard level is Configuration Manager. And Configuration Manager is the product that's actually going to tell you who done it. And so then you can make the call and say, WTF, why did that get changed? Right? And it also will allow you to actually put it back with Configuration Manager. You can say, hey, I see you did that click, revert that back to no reservation. Right? So again, when we talk about the suite, there are other corresponding com uh, components of the suite 
that really help you uh, when, you're, when you're going a little bit beyond just the vSphere monitoring, okay? But that's off script, but just to let you know. Here, this is nice to know what happened, but you don't know who did it, but you can go fix it, right? So there, that's, that's quickly uh, giving us value of being able to troubleshoot a problem in our environment quickly, hone in on where the problem is, and then know how to solve it. Uh, another pitch for vRealize Operations Manager version 6, the new version that's coming out very soon, uh, is the ability to remediate. Okay, so it's pretty important. Here, I can identify problems, but I can't do anything about them without going outside the system to go fix it. In the new 6.0 platform, one of the other new very nice sort of uh, usability enhancements is instead of firing off all these symptoms that, oh, all these things are, are breaching, I'm going to be able to combine symptoms into a problem. So out of the box, we're going to deliver a set of problems saying, okay, if I see this VM experiencing this symptom and this symptom and this symptom, that's indicative of this problem. And then we'll give recommendations to remediate. Click the button to remediate. Remediation uh, recommendation could be, for example, vMotion, that VM, off of a host that has contested memory, for example. Okay, so in this particular release, the 5X release, which is what you all have, because that's the only thing that's out now, uh, remediation is quick. We can get you quickly to the problem, but you gotta go fix it. And in 6.0, recommendations, click, remediate. That sound reasonable? Does that sound exciting? You guys want that? I do. Now, here's, here's something uh, that's important to note there. In the 6.0 release, currently, the, what's, what's planned is a human, that means look around you, there's some of them here, a human has to go in and click and say, yeah, I want to do that. We're not going to allow you to automate some remediations. I believe that's coming, but it's a little scary, right? To, to say, hey, there's, there's something going wrong, and I have a few options to remediate. It's a little bit frightening to say, computer, Figure it out and go fix it. But I believe that's going to come to allow that automation. But with the first release, some of the humans in the room are going to have to click a button to fix it. Okay? All right. So now we're talking about capacity. Remember, we talked about sort of, you know, our, our ops kind of stuff. We need to fix things. But capacity planning, that's kind of a big deal. Um, how many of you like flying blind when it comes to guesstimating what you think you're going to need in the future when it comes to resources and so forth? Ah, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to need about three more hosts, and yeah, it looks like we're going to need this much uh, more storage, and uh, yeah, that should cover all the business growth that we plan in the next 12 to 18 months. Swag, right? Single wild-ass guess. Just pick a number out and make a guess. Well, sometimes you can operate that way, but sometimes you've got people to report to that really want some more hard numbers. They really want to see. Really, tell me, what is it going to take for us to migrate this application from this infrastructure over onto this uh, vSphere infrastructure? How many resources am I going to need? What's my consolidation ratio going to look like when I move that over? How much time do I have left now in my infrastructure before I run out of something? Speaking of time, how am I doing? I'm good? All right. Fine. Uh, so this capacity management piece is huge. This is a huge piece, and I'm going to tell you again what we have with 5.7, 5x, 5.8, I should say, today, and what's in 6.0, right? So today, uh, from a capacity standpoint, I'm looking and my risk is pretty high. And that really, what that really means is I'm about to or I've already run out of something. So I'm at risk of constraining all my other resources because something is, uh, I'm capped out somewhere. So again, this tool is going to help me quickly focus in on where have I run out of a resource and what is it. Uh, boy, this clicker is awesome. So uh, again, every single major badge has some sub badges underneath it that, that roll up to that top score. So if I click to expand why is the risk so high, then I start to break down my sub badges of how much time do I have left before I run out of a resource. How much capacity do I have left? So how much room do I have to put on X number of average size VMs? And how much stress is happening in my environment? Stress is a killer, 
right? It's the same for computers as it is for humans. Stress will kill you dead, D-E-D, -E dead. So what's happening here is stress is going to identify your chronic workloads that are working too hard. They're stressed out. And that's going to contribute to uh, a, a risk score, right? Because if you've got stressed workloads that are always running and contending with other workloads, you're at risk somewhere. You either have or you will run out of some resource pretty soon. So it's this roll-up score of these three items that gives me my risk. So if I look at my middle section here, actually both of these, uh, I'm in a, a ton of trouble because I've already, uh, it's telling me I got no time left. Uh, how many of you would like to go to the doctor and he's saying, sorry, you have no time left. <laughs> it's not a friendly message to receive. And so here we receive that, you're out of time, buddy. And by the way, you're oversubscribed. You've gone over the limits of what you're able to run in your environment. So you're beyond dead. <laughs> you're in a serious situation here. What are you talking about? I was never stressed out. Well, it doesn't matter. You, you've consumed all the resource, right? So you died without being stressed. Oh, I guess that's not too bad. Uh, so if we click on the badges uh, to get more details in the capacity remaining section, uh, what this will tell you, when you go into the views area, are you guys familiar with the views and the different ways you can view your data in VCOps? What this helps you do, these little badges at the top here, it helps you filter the views into these categories, right? So in this case, we're talking about risk and capacity. So with this capacity badge uh, pressed, these particular views down below are going to be honed in. So I don't see a whole long list. I'm just going to see the views that are going to be relevant to capacity. Okay? And so what this is telling me, if I click on my virtual machine capacity, I see a whole lot of numbers across uh, these columns here. And basically, it's, it's, what it's going to typically do is usually there's one resource that you're running out of more than another, and that'll be bolded. So again, based on trends and so forth, if memory is the thing that you're consuming most often, that'll be bolded, and that'll be the number you're going to run out of soonest. Okay, but here we've already ran out of both of these CPU and memory, so there's really nothing bold. And in fact, it went to red to say you need to look right here, right now. Here's what you just ran out of. Okay, and so once I've done that, uh, again, this is just kind of highlighting where that's found under the planning tab under views. And again, this is filtered by the capacity badge. I go to my virtual machine capacity. I see these numbers, and I say, oh, uh, that's bad. But what can I do about it? On the far right hand side here, you see create new scenario. Has anyone used that? No one has used that? Okay, lucky winner here. So has it provided value for you? Have you been able to do some scenarios to do some planning? So what it allows you to do is sort of a what if. What if I added more capacity to my environment? What if I went out, I got some money, I was able to buy some new hosts of this configuration. How much more time would that give me? How much stress would that relieve in my environment? So you can do a what if scenario of providing more resource. You can also do a what if scenario of uh, generating more demand. So what if I migrated this three tier application from this infrastructure over to vSphere and then the VMs are configured this way now what? Now how much time do I have left of all of my resources? Okay, so you can do a what if scenario here on both of those. Um, yeah, this is, this is awesome. You can do it on both of those, either creating more capacity, giving it more capacity, or creating more demand because you've got some new projects you need to spin up. Okay, so here you see that the two choices here, this particular slide where it's going to walk you through actually ha uh, adding more resource, more hosts. Okay, and what you can do, you basically say, I want to add a host. Now, uh, what I didn't see, I thought you could do it here. Maybe that's only in 6.0. I've been only doing 6.0 for so long. This 5.8 stuff is really old to me, so I'm forgetting where everything is. But I thought you could model it to say, in fact, you can. So it, see, these are the hosts that are already in your environment. And you can just say, hey, give me one more of those, right? So just configure these values to be the same as the hosts you already have and then go ahead and add them in that way so that you can model it. Here's something that's really cool that I only discovered uh, a short time ago. You can actually use this tool as sort of a migration planner. 
what you can do is you see these, uh, however many hosts there are here, four hosts, let's just say, four or five, and they are of this configuration, 12 cores, 96 gig of RAM. You could click all of those and say remove host, and then add in four or five new hosts, let's say with 16 cores and 128 or 256 gig of RAM even. So what you're saying is take those hosts out, add in the same number of hosts in this upgraded configuration and that will now give you a capacity score on what if I upgraded, I ripped all that out and I put in new servers. So that's kind of a cool way to use this tool as well for a migration planning scenario. Okay? So here we've added the uh, new host and one other thing that you can do is you can say, oh, I'm also going to be adding new data stores. So if I add new data store, because disk capacity is one of the resources you can exhaust, so you can also do the one-if planning about, uh, about that scenario as well. Um, here in this case, they've only, and this is actually really funny, they've selected two new hosts. You can see one host is this 12-core, 96 gig of RAM. Look at this other one. Oh, it looks like we're adding a laptop to the infrastructure as well. <laughs> <laughs> Single core, two gig around. I don't know why that was kind of a type. I don't know why I did that. It was pretty funny though. I saw that. I'm like, oh, we're going to throw a laptop in there. All right. So now, once you apply that scenario, now you're going to see your actual. This is today. This is with no changes. And my far right column is saying my hardware changed. So now I've added in those additional resources. And now instead of being out of memory by six VMs, I've actually got room for four and a half more, 4.2 more, okay? So the what-if scenarios are pretty, uh, pretty powerful. Now, I have to tell you, in the 5.8 environments, and, and probably you've seen this, when you log out and log back in, your what-if scenarios are all gone. You cannot save them in the 5x world, and you cannot project them to a point in time. You can't say, oh, I'm buying these new servers, but they're not arriving until February 14th, lucky Valentine's Day, you're getting new servers, right? So you can't do that in the 5X, but in the 6X you can say, here's when the servers are arriving, and so you can plot that out to say, hey, that's a planned project, and you can see, all right, cool, I'm going to make it, I'm not going to have a shortfall before those servers arrive. So that's sort of the, the upgraded features in 6.0. Here are these what-if planning scenarios are great, but you can't save them, and you can't say when in time they're going to happen. Okay, but what you can do, you can add more scenarios here. So I could say, add in that one, I could click do another scenario, do another scenario of more uh, consumption, and have them all listed in each column, and you can also combine them. You can say, all right, show me a comparison of all those what-if scenarios, and then combine them all. Show me if I did all of those scenarios at one time, what would that look like compared to what I have today? Make sense? So it's kind of a cool tool. It's, it's actually really powerful. One thing that people sort of get stuck on, and it happened to me, is I can't find that what is scenario. Where do I do that? Two things are very important. First of all, you have to be highlighted on a cluster. It won't work if you highlight your data center. Uh, you won't have this virtual machine capacity view. So you have to be highlighted on a cluster, and you have to be on this virtual machine capacity. And I think there's one other one that you can get this what-if scenario. If I clicked on this capacity risk details, this little what-if scenario thing disappears. You're like, dang it, where do I know that was in here? So that's important to note where that actually is, okay? All right, the last thing that I'm going to click through here is, well, my clicker's going to click it for me. Basically, this is... This is talking about uh, the same sort of thing we were just looking at, but plotting it on a graph. So if I didn't make any changes, when, I, when these intersect of how many uh, VMs I deployed and how many average room, room I have left, when that intersects, that's when I'm done. And after that, I've got no more capacity. But here, I've added in the what-if scenario to say, oh, I'm actually going to throw 10 more VMs at this infrastructure. And so you see my shortfall is going to happen a little bit earlier. This is a timeline here. Holy moly, five years ago that happened. <laughs> All right, so yeah, as you can see the shortfall here of if I added that in now, where am I going to intersect and run out of capacity? Okay, so from a, uh, from just, just what does the tool provide from a value standpoint? You just saw it, right? So you saw, I mean, uh, we wrote vSphere, right? So we have the best insight to how vSphere operates. There's a lot of other ops tools out there that do a number of different things and they talk to some of the same APIs and so forth, but 
we wrote the stuff. We wrote the hypervisor. So we're definitely the best tool to know how it works, what's happening under the covers, what our consolidation ratios realistically can be, et cetera. Uh, it's also, you know, we're simplifying your ops because you get it as this bundle. You get vSphere and you get operations manager standard with it. Uh, you get smart alerts. So again, you get alerted ahead of time before you run out of something. Um, and also uh, smart alerts to performance problems. And then you're going to get some end-to-end -end visibility in your environments. Again, vSphere only with the standard edition. But then as you start to step up uh, into uh, advanced, or enterprise, you get more visibility well beyond vSphere. And if you think about it, that's a key point why the, uh, uh oh, the dogs are at me. I think I got to shut up here. Um, if you think about it, vCenter operations manager says what? vCenter. So a lot of people have in their head, oh, well, that means it's just a vSphere product. It's vCenter. It's only for vCenter. But the cloud management platform that we're doing now with the vRealize branding, the vRealize operations suite, goes well beyond vSphere. So into hybrid workloads, public, private cloud workloads, Amazon Web Services, we pull in workload data from there, uh, all your storage arrays, et cetera. So today or tomorrow in the vRealize uh, operations platform, you don't even need vCenter. You could completely have an environment without any vSphere or any vCenter. So it was kind of important for us to drop the vCenter uh, nomenclature to indicate, oh, it's really a vCenter product, because it's not. It's much, much beyond that. OK? So that's it for me. I'm going to pass it back over. And more marketing. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> so um, now I want to kind of switch gears and to kind of talk about with all the capabilities and functionality that vSphere operations management to offer, what are some of the tangible benefits that a lot of our customers have received? Um, we, d we did two studies by a third party was done by Management Insight Studies in 2012 and 2014. And what they did is in that study is they took a look at customers who had standalone vSphere and those who had vSphere with operations management to determine what is that incremental benefit that customers are achieving. And what they found is in both of those studies is that customers were able to achieve increased capacity utilization by about 34% increased consolidation ratios by another 36%. But as you can also, just like we went through a demo in terms of how um, easy it was to go down to do problem resolution, we, was, we saw that there was a 26% reduction in time to uh, di problem diagnostics as well as problem resolution time. So now let's kind of, uh, also when we're thinking about from our customer base, it's like generally customers need to see the real value of vSphere operations management within two to three business, two to three weeks. 78% of our customers tend to see a full ROI within the first 90 days. So I think that the value proposition uh, that the market research has shown, as well as some of the ROI metrics, it really shows that, that the value of the vSphere operations management pays for itself in a very, relatively very short period of time. But now I want to also kind of talk about real life examples. First, I want to talk about Millennium Pharmacy Systems. They're a relatively small company, about 100 or 200 people, employees. Um, they had vSphere for a ver or deployed in the virtualized environment for a very long time. And they recently upgraded to vSphere with operations management. Now, this, the interesting thing is, is that they thought their operating virtualized environment was pretty efficient. But when they deployed the ops management component, VCOps standard in this case with VSOM, they saw that they were actually shocked at how much resources they could actually reclaim. They were able to see a 20% increase in VM density, as well as an increase in efficiency across resources. So even in ver small virtual environments, we're finding customers are finding tremendous amount of value um, within, for the particular product and able to re reclaim resources that simply because a lot of times their uh, VMs tend to be over-provisioned. We also have the Waddington Group. Waddington Group is a very interesting case study, actually, because they're a portfolio company of a private equity firm. <coughs> so what these guys are not only growing organically, but their parent company is acquiring companies at a re very regular pace, because they're, they're part of a roll-up strategy. Now, IT in this case was given a very, very demanding task, which was, for every integration, for every new company we acquire, you have to integrate all, your back, all the back-end IT within 
30 days. I imagine that. Doing your, their do, IT was doing their day-to-day -day -day job, but now they have to integrate the back-end IT of, of a recently acquired company within 30 days. And they were given no additional funding or resources to do it. So when they were going out to, to look for a solution, it's like, how do we bridge this gap between what I can actually, resources I have available, and the demand that the business is putting on me, they found vSphere operations management to be that solution. Because of the tools and capabilities that we went over, they saw an over 80% reduction in time in integrating backend systems. This is pretty amazing. And in terms of not only making the IT lives easier, but their, the fact that they came out as rock stars when they were able to deliver on that really tough business challenge. And we also have Cornerstone, which my colleague Martin will go over in a quick click. Yeah, um, just. So Cornerstone uh, Home Lending is one of the biggest um, private home mortgage companies in the United States. They have over 120 offices and over 1,200 employees throughout the U.S. Um, what was interesting about Cornerstone was that they actually had Hyper-V deployed in their environment. And what they found was that as the company was scaling up in size and complexity, Hyper-V just couldn't handle um, the, 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 the load and that, that they wanted. So they were, they were having a lot of problems with Hyper-V. They, they decided to try out VSOM, or vSphere Operation Management. And what they found was actually really remarkable. They found that 68% of their um, uh, VMs were actually over-provisioned. And basically, um, they were just blown away by the amount of waste in terms of resources and stuff, right? So through deploying vSphere with operation management, they were able to cut their hardware costs through consolidation by 70%, and they were able to, more importantly, cut down the amount of time that it took to remediate a problem from between 15 and 20 minutes to less than a minute. This was remarkable for them. You know, there was no more uh, downtime for their business critical applications when they needed it. So very quickly, just to wrap it up, um, we just wanted to give you some, some next steps to, to leave with. Um, the first next step is please uh, go and download our free virtual book, um, our Virtualization 2.0 for Dummies. It has a lot of content that we talked about today, but it also goes beyond just compute um, virtualization to really the, the next generation of storage networks and stuff like that too. So vmware.com slash go slash virtualization dash 2.0, that's a free ebook to download. We also have a free 60-day evaluation, very much like how Cornerstone evaluated our product and found how useful it was. We also want you to you know, try it out and see for yourself what sort of um, benefits you can gain in terms of capacity, um, um, in terms of analyzing the risk and, and stuff like that. And finally, we have the vSphere beta right now. If you're interested in the future of vSphere, um, vSphere obviously is a core part of vSphere with operations management. You can go join our beta. It's absolutely free to join and it's open to everyone. Um, you can basically go there and you can help shape the future of vSphere. Um, you can look at our roadmaps. You can watch uh, webinars that will teach you about uh, how, to, how to do certain things, and you can also interact with our product teams through a discussion forum. Um, there's an awesome community there of almost 13,000 people who are in the beta. Uh, they would uh, really sh love to share ideas, and it's a great opportunity to interact with the product team, ask them any questions you have. If you're having problems with the product, we would love to know and help <laughs> us uh, improve our product for the future. With that said, uh, we want to thank you, and we'd like to open the floor up for uh, questions now. So if anyone has a question, please um, stand up, or you can ask your question. Uh, what about uh, integrating external, well, integrating the storage arrays into storage? Yeah, thank you. So what about integrating the storage arrays into the product so that um, the non-VMFS plans are accounted for as a global capacity perspective, such as virtualized arrays where the capacity is global? Yeah, I'll answer that one. So great question. If you couldn't hear, so the question was, what about incorporating capacity of storage arrays, for example, into capacity planning, if I'm understanding correctly? So this is a key point in the 6.0 environment. In 5X, your capacity planning only relates to vSphere objects. In 6.0, anything that plugs into the 6.0 platform can participate in the capacity engine and can participate in capacity planning. For example, uh, a fiber channel switch or a storage array or something like that. Okay, my fiber channel switch, port five, I can see based on trends, I'm gonna saturate that thing uh, in March of 2015. So that's available in 6.0. Anything that's written to take advantage of that engine can do uh, capacity planning. Make sense? 
source. So data from the storage question was, how do you collect data from the storage array? So again, vSphere objects, so data stores, the standard edition knows about data stores, doesn't know about inside the array, into the metal, the storage processors, the cache hit ratio, the RAID groups, et cetera. That's going to come from the third-party management pack. And they're all out there, HP, NetApp, EMC, Dell, they all have management packs that basically bolt on, if you will, and feed their data into the Realize Operations Manager. But again, key point is, Standard Edition has no ability to add on management packs. You must step up to the advanced level to have management packs. How about network? Network. So the question was, what about network? So again, if the networking vendor has provided a pack, for example, Cisco or Extreme Networks or whoever, uh, then we'll be able to collect that information. I will also say there is something today called MPSD, Management Pack for Storage Devices. That gives you visibility to your fiber channel and FCOE infrastructure from the HBAs on the server all the way through to the array. It's universally. Same thing is coming. There's going to be a universal network visibility that's coming that's going to allow us to collect data from that first, the top of rack switch, that first hop, and collect that data in. And that's going to evolve over time. It's not available yet. It's still early beta, but that's coming. A uh, question on the side over here. Hi. Um, will the product support virtual volumes uh, when they uh, come around? Obviously, you're removing data stores from, from the vSphere environment completely. And if so, in what edition of, of uh, operations management? Yeah, so 6.0 is going to have some capability. But again, some of that's also going to depend on the vendor pack because each vendor is doing something with VVOLs, you know, the way they do it. So it's going to depend on the management pack, but we will have visibility into that. It's hard to say because a lot of that development of the storage type adapters from third parties, they're on their development schedule. But they all want to hit when 6.0 hits or shortly thereafter. Okay. Anybody else? We've got a couple more minutes. Yeah, go ahead. In the middle. Um, when 6.0 six, six is out, uh, do I need to, to upgrade everything to 6X or something, or can I run 6.0 to my 5.X uh, five, uh, vCenter and, and A6 host and so on? Fantastic question. I wish I would have paid you earlier, because that's a key point that we didn't talk about. I mean, I'll pay you later. Um, but migration to 6.0 is side-by-side -side migration. So you don't put your, your bits in, click install, and upgrade your 5x platform. Instead, you stand up your 6x platform, point it at your 5x source, and say, I would like to pull all of that data into 6.0. So you leave your 5x environment undisturbed, untouched. And what that also allows you to do, if you think about it, now you've got your 6x, pla 6x platform up. Your 5x is still running, so you didn't rip the carpet out from under your ops teams and go, ha ha, here you go, 6 -0. enjoy it, because it's different. It's very different. So you can have them both running side by side. When you get comfortable with the 6x platform, shut down the 5x platform. Okay. And so you can have them both monitoring at the same time, even though you've pulled in data. They can still be hitting the same vCenter. Think about the overhead, though, because now you're double polling that vCenter. So you've got to think you've got to take that into account. But you can have them running side by side, collecting data from the same vCenter. And the second question, uh, is there a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between a, a VC ops and, and, and a vCenter, or can I run, uh, can I monitor uh, several we centers with so that 's another question I owe you money for uh, so basically there 's another uh, component of the migration is I can migrate from multiple five x instances into a single six x cluster that 's one part of your question right so again i 've got multiple five eights I set up my new six x cluster, which is now a scaled out cluster. And I can pull in multiple vCenters and consolidate them all into a single 6x platform. OK, so you can think of that as a consolidation migration. Uh, and the second question, I think, was, can I register more than one vCenter with a vCops? No problem. You can do that today in the 5x platform. You can do it tomorrow in the 6x platform. And I, I think we're going to get booted out of here in about a minute. So maybe i got time for one more short question. If there's any more questions, uh, we'll also be out in the hallway for, okay, actually, there's one more question. Yeah, go, go ahead. Maybe we can get it real quick. Go ahead. What do you got? 
uh, small question. Uh, in our production environment, we frequently have a situation when uh, there are some kind of uh, forgotten snapshots. We take a snapshot of uh, VM, uh, make some upgrade operations, and uh, then uh, then everything went fine. We forgot about it, and it just consumes a lot of space. And maybe I hope. So. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to come talk to you, okay? Because yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk that question. So that's about all the time we have, guys. Enjoy the party tonight. Hopefully, you stick around for that. Have a good time. Also, I'll be in the booth too, so you can come see us in the booth. All right?